Right, in this video, we are going to install the SAP NetWeaver ABAP trial um, in Docker, specifically on a Windows system. Um, this video is going to follow the guide um, created here in this GitHub repository. Um, and uh, this GitHub repo was created with special credit to Tobias Hoffman, Navi Zamani, and Gregor Wolf. So if you want any more details, please make sure you follow and check their uh, GitHub repos here. Um, this will work with the developer trial 751 plus, um, and uh, those files can all be downloaded from the SAP um, developer, developer trial page, um, which again is, is part of the steps. So I'll send that, that link will be there as well. Um, but you'll find for some reason it's changed a little bit and uh, it's only got 751 available. Not 100% sure why they haven't got 752, or maybe I've missed it. Um, but I'm going to be running with the seven version 752, Service Pack 4, but this will also work with 751 if you can't find the uh, 752 version. Um, so we are going to start from, start this video rather, from step five. And so, and step five, at that point, you should have a folder that looks like this, which has been cloned from the GitHub repo. Inside it, you should have a Docker file and you should have a folder called SAP download. In there, you should have placed all of your downloaded R, uh, extracted RAR files, which will all be here. You don't have to copy all of them, but I've just put them all here for the sake of simplicity. And obviously uh, you can have this, <clears throat> this folder wherever you want um, on your machine. So um, let's go ahead, uh, now that the folders are all set up, and jump right into the command prompt. So I've got my command prompt window open here, and the first thing I'm going to do is navigate to the folder in question, so the, the repo folder itself, just sitting on my desktop. And now that we're here, we are going to run the docker build command which is dockable T N W ABAP. Again, I'm using 752, but uh, you can do 751, or you don't even have to change it really. It's, it's just more of a, a labeling thing. So um, as long as your files are in that SAP downloads folder, it'll run, all of these steps will run just fine. So let's go ahead and run the build and let this go. Right, now that that has uh, completed, we need to go ahead and um, change our max map count for the virtual machine. And we do that by opening up a new PowerShell window and running WSL D Docker desktop, WSLD Docker desktop, yep. And then from here, we run sys control um, W vm max map count and we set that to that and we press enter and we can check that that change has actually occurred by going sys control vm oops max map count and there we go so that's set correctly um so that's all fine now we can go ahead and run our Docker container. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to enter the following command uh, here. I'm just going to copy it across. It was quite long. And this is um, running with these specific ports, uh, which are obviously the ports from the original um, SAP ABAP trial guide. Um, and your host name, etc., etc., etc. So um, let's go ahead and press enter. Right. So now uh, it's running, which is fantastic. So um, once we have um, actually uh, got the machine running, we now need to run the install just like we would have with the, um, if we were using OpenSUSE directly in like um, VirtualBox or whatever it is, we now need to go ahead and install our SAP system. So the first thing we need to do is run the UUIDD daemon 
and to do that you run user spin uuidd and once that's up and running we run the install.sh file and again this is going to take uh, quite a long time to run but um, oh, let's just uh, you just go yes to agree and you enter your password making sure that it's eight characters And uh, yeah, this part will take a while, um, but once it finishes, um, we will continue. Right, now that we've had a cup of tea and um, our installation has been successful, um, all that's left to do now is start the SAP system. So uh, to do that, we're going to change to the NPL admin user. And once we're there, we are going to run the command start SAP whoops oh and that's going to go ahead and start um, running through a few things and there you go um, the SAP system is now um, up and running so let's go ahead and see if uh, we can access it using the GUI. And there are a few post installation steps we need to do. Um, but let's open up the GUI. Again, if you haven't installed it, um, just go into um, the folder, the RAR files, and uh, you'll find the client um, over there. So here is our GUI client. I've already set up um, uh, my item here, but I'll show you the settings while we're here. So you can see I've just got my description, application server. This can also be the VHCAL NPLCI. Uh, I've just set it to this. It doesn't really matter. Um, and so um, we can just click OK and let's try and log in. There we are. So um, we're going to first log in with the um, SAP star and the password is down load with a one. Again, this will be in the steps, so don't worry. Brilliant. <clears throat> and there we are. You can now log into your SAP system. Um, there's obviously a few post installation steps, which you'll see here. Um, and these are uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, I just pulled the steps directly from um, Nabi Zamani's blog, a uh, repo rather. Um, and so you just basically uh, run through the S license uh, setup and you just take your hardware key and you create a, um, a new perpetual license. And then obviously you've got your rest of your information here. You can generate your test data. Um, and then obviously you can you can test your public pings here for your HTTP and HTTPS. Um, and otherwise, um, that's it. So um, if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. Um, and otherwise, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching.